I'm Father John McInnes, and since the year 2000, I've been pastor here at St. John the Baptist Church in Peabody. It's been a great experience of God's love in the people that I have served, the people who really make this parish what it is today. And it's happy to be a part of celebrating 150 years of the church's life here at St. John's. It's a great thing to be a part of this wonderful work that's been going on in this church for so many years, to be seeing people's lives changed. And often those moments of change in their life happen here in the church. Here people bring their loved ones when the time comes for them to go home to God. This is a church that has many stories to it, many different people, many different lives. St. John's is the oldest church here in downtown Peabody, and it has an interesting story behind it. In 1871, immigrants from Ireland mostly and other countries came here. At that time, they had to worship elsewhere, but they wanted their own church. And so the Catholic Church was started here on this spot in 1871. And a few years later, a pastor was appointed. He was a young priest, Father Michael Masterson from Ireland and he gathered the community together to build an edifice, a church, that would be worthy of the faith that he had and that his people had. And so for 150 years, that faith has been nurtured in this spot. A church should be a place where the light of God shines into our lives. That was the vision that Father Masterson had of this church. We look back at the beginning of the church. We looked at how it was designed the altar itself has been brought forward. So what we now use to worship God, we have the very original altar and it's there so that we can gather around it as the people of God. Outside the church is a steeple, one of the highest points in the city. And a few years ago, the first work we needed to do was to restore that tower so that people could see on the top the cross that means so much to us as Catholic Christians rebuilding that tower was a sign to us that we are here to be a sort of beacon, a signal, a sign to the people of the city of God's love for us. It also meant a lot for us to be able to know that that tower has stood the test of time, the way that our faith enables us to stand strong in difficult times. My name is Father Kevin Lever, and for the last three years I've been assigned here to St. John's as well as to St. Thomas as the parochial vicar. I love being assigned here because uh, of the special history that uh, I have but also my family has here at St. John's Parish. When we're baptized we become part of the family and Father John said that because I was baptized here at St. John's instead of saying welcome back he was going to say Father Kevin welcome home. The Cardinal whether he knew it or not, assigned me here as my first parish as a priest after finishing my studies at the North American College in Rome to come to the place where my journey of faith started in the waters of the baptismal font. Over the last three years here at St. John's, we've undergone a beautiful renovation to kind of showcase the beauty that was originally in this church when it was built uh, in the 1870s. Uh, to highlight what may have just faded over time or what may have been lost. So when my parents came up to visit one day, I was showing them around the church. I pointed to the font and I said, Mom, look, the font, the font. I was baptized in that. My mom looks at me and said, that's not the font you were baptized in. I said, what do you mean? She said, you were baptized downstairs. I said, what? But it doesn't matter. You know, I'm still, I'm still coming to grips with it that I wasn't baptized in the upper church. And I told Father John, if I ever meet the pastor who baptized me in heaven, I'm gonna have some words with him. But it's still a beautiful thing to be assigned here to the parish where my faith journey began. Uh, and so I'm very excited uh, to be here uh, and to continue to be here as we say goodbye to Father John uh, in his retirement and welcome our new pastor, Father Derek. My name is Karen Hinton. I've been a member of St. John's Parish for 39 years and an employee for 21. I was one of Father John's first hires and I love my ministry here. We chose St. John the Baptist for a place for our children to be formed as Catholics and we found this to be a great fit for our family because of the different cultures, very family friendly, the priests were wonderful and welcoming, the support we give to one another through good times and bad 
and we also in the community give support. The fact that Father John had the vision for our parish to renovate has been very important. When Father John moves on to retirement, we'll still go on as a vibrant community. To see this church renovated and the people that Father John brought in that were very talented, it was in rough shape. It was showing its age. It just lifts your spirit. You are drawn so deeper into the liturgy itself. And you can feel the spirit more deeply because of this renovation. You see how beautiful that is artistically and that it's something that is very important to us here at this community. We value this worship space. People gave their time, their talent, and their treasure. I'm John Stevie. I'm Josh Stevie. Your son, my son. Oh, <laughs> that, gonna, that was a clean take. Get this. All right. <laughs> I'm John Stevie. I'm Josh, his son. Uh, we have a construction company that does uh, remodeling of commercial and residential products. I was an altar server. Did a lot of the Easter Masses, Christmas Mass. I always do believe that we need to always give back. So for us, it was something that we believe is part of what we're called to do. I really enjoyed um, working on the church. I really liked the, the history of it. When we opened up the floor, like you just see how like it was built back in the day. Up top, there was panels that covered up like these nice details. Being able to be like, oh, like what's behind here? And you pop off the panel and you're like, wow, like this has been here for so long and like nobody knew about it. I'm moved by it in the sense that I really feel it does bring people closer to Jesus. And that's the whole reason why we do it. Before the paint job, you could actually see the, the framing behind it because it was so dirty. And now when you come in, it just, even the lighting, directs your eyes to the right places. I was always excited to come to Mass here, but now like you walk in and you have that like warm and fuzzy feeling of like, wow, this is home. That's what I'm hoping other people feel coming here. My name is Jonathan Fischera. I'm a managing partner of Colonial Marble Company. Uh, we're based out of Everett, Massachusetts. My great-grandfather started this business in 1922. Being Catholic and taking great pride in my religion, uh, it always means something to me to be involved in liturgical restorations and liturgical projects. I hope that people's faith and the church will sustain those, those coming generations so that my kids and their kids can, can be a part of it. It's an old building and there was a lot of remediation that had to take place. When we dismantled the existing altar and the existing reredos, we discovered that the floor below wasn't in the best of condition. But in the end, my team really knocked it out of the park on this one. My name is Dave Gravel. I am a former city councilor here in the city of Peabody and a lifelong parishioner here at St. John's. There are so many important events that have taken place here for me as an individual and for my family. The church, to me, was always a place of uh, respite. It's like coming home. Every time I come here, I feel like I'm coming home. When most people think of the downtown, they have a vision of St. John's, perfectly poised behind City Hall, the grandeur of the front, you know, it just stands out. You get this feeling of, how did they do that? You think about that 150 years ago, can you imagine somebody trying to replicate this church today? I'm not sure we could. And the knowledge that this was really a person's vision that was drawn up, constructed 150 years ago by an Irish immigrant, it's hard not to see this church as sort of a memorable monument to all the great things that Peabody was built upon. I love this church. I love the way it's laid out. I love the beauty of the, the, the colors, the size, the dimensions. I love the, the, the way the light shines through the stained glass windows. The sound of that organ when it's played is so peaceful in my memory. I love that. I just, it just, makes me feel like I'm still connected to even the people we lost. I can come here and talk to people that I haven't spoken to in years because they're no longer with us. And that to me is what makes this so neat. When your grandfather came here, he was a stone cutter? Yes, he was. 
came here from from Ireland. And they quarried the stone right from here, from Peabody. They quarried the stone out of the quarry on Warren Street Extension. A lot of the, a lot of the Irish ones that were coming knew, knew something about stone cutting. The church is built on 12 large slabs of granite. The church was built over a period of five years. There are these paintings above the arches. Yes. Uh, tell me about those, because I never found out how, you were telling me how they were made. Those were made by an old Italian man who learned his business in Rome. He did paintings for many of the big basilica churches in Rome. He was just wonderful. Wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful man. St. John's was my church. I loved the church. I couldn't do enough to, to help anybody who needed help at St. John's. You've lived almost 100 of those 150 years. Yep. Yep. What, what would be your message to the people of St. John's? What, what do you want to tell them? I want to tell them that they're part of the greatest parish in all of the Boston Diocese. No two ways about it. Good people. Good people. Every bit of encouragement I could give them. Not to forget their church, ever. Not to forget their church, ever. To see slowly the progress of this church uh, being restored to its original beauty has been so incredible. That's what sacred art, sacred architecture should do. It should raise our minds to God and we should experience the beauty uh, that is God. Uh, and so I think the, the beautifully restored church does that. We hope you'll keep in touch with us. Hope that you'll support the good work that's going on here. What you see is the work of many generous hearts. And so we invite you to be a part of that as well. There's more work to be done always work to be done. And so we invite you to consider supporting our parish, the renewal and reconstruction of our church, and most important, the mission of our church, which is to bring the love of Jesus Christ to all of the world, beginning here in this place of faith and love.